at the beginning this is Bruno he's old and he came here thinking I have treats he's wrong all I have is love can we talk about UA pedals now Bruno let's see what he thinks he's, he's not a fan doesn't care because it's not a cookie <clears throat> well, for us, it's absolutely better than cookies. So, the new pedal that we're talking about is the Del Verb, uh, which stands for two things, Del and Verb, obviously. And it's kind of really what you want and what you've been waiting for, because, <coughs> because instead of spending 800 bucks on a reverb, with a lot of features that you're likely never going to use, and... 400 bucks on a delay with a lot of features that you're likely not going to use Put them together on a board running both of them with power which you have to supply and pay for you might as well just get the features you are going to use and Spend less than 400 bucks now many companies have and the master super uh, Delay I think it's the Nemesis from Source Audio, and then they've got the Ventress, which is the reverb. And then they combine it into the Collider, which Vanessa actually plays and uses and loves. So the first thing she said when she saw the Delverb was, wait, isn't that like a Collider? It is and it isn't, um, because it's classic-y kind of sounds. So <clears throat> if you thaw, if you thaw, Thaw with a TH? No, if you saw videos for the Starlight and the Golden Reverberator and you liked them, but the price point was scary. Now there's a solution because for slightly under 400 bucks with plastic knobs and no presets, you can actually get the best of these two in one pedal and it even looks cooler. Come on, is that a color or is that a color? <clears throat> because it says tape on there. I'm wearing tapes because of Mr. Google.com links below. I'm not getting money, but you can buy cool shirts. That, that, that's really it. This, this is a delay and a reverb. Now it's just reverb. Now it's just delay. Pretty damn freaking simple. You have the three delays from the Starlight, but with less options. So, for example, on the tape, uh, which is an echoplexy kind of a thing, you could pick tape age. Well, you can't do that here. It's, you know, a one setting, which is fixed. On the analog deluxe memory man setting, you could pick whatever modulation you wanted in your more or less whatever. Uh, and on the precision, which can be flangey, modulation-y, or just a digital delay, you had quite a few options. And you can't set that on the pedal, but you can do a preset that you carry around with you on the app, which we're going to get into. Um, speed, feedback, mix for both elements. Color, which I'm a little bit confused about because if you turn it all the way down, there's almost no delay uh, audible. And here it gets very thick and big. Modulation. Don't quite know why there's these two thingies here, so I'm 
We're going to find out. I haven't really played around with it too much. And reverb level. Reverb, you got a spring, which is technically all you need. You got a plate. I, I can't really discern reverb types based on listening to them. I don't know. It sounds good or it doesn't. And then you get the Hall 224, which is based on Lexicon 224, uh, which in the <clears throat> golden reverberator was actually modeled to the T and had a lot of options. And in that algorithm, you have um, kind of ways of having more reverb in the low end, mids or treble. And that's how you're defining what it sounds like, but also how long it is and stuff like this. None of it's possible here, but there are, again, ways to set a preset kind of Lexicon 224 setup that you then carry around whenever you're switching it to the Hall 224. Again, there are no presets, so there's no way to, like, save anything. So it's either a tape and a 224 or a, you know, whatever this is set up to. It's a limitation. Dumbass limitation because it's a digital pedal. Why in the world wouldn't they give us a preset? The bastards! It even doesn't even have MIDI. No. What you see is what you get, what you said is what you get. So on the back, I forgot to say that on the Galaxy uh, video, it is of course fully stereo. Does it really create stereo? Mm, nothing really, I think. Uh, actually, ping pong on the precision. We're gonna, not going to check that out because we're too lazy. So on the precision, all the way down, you have ping pongs. <clears throat> but of course, anything stereo will be uh, going in, will come out stereo. There's a little switch back here for pairing, but the pairing actually, I didn't have to do anything there. And down there is a USB-C uh, port. Now the USB-C is for the UA Connect app, which now... Uh, governs all your UA Spark plugins, VST instruments and everything in it. If you do a yearly subscription, and they're not paying me to say that, but I want to say that because it's good shit. For I think like twelve fifty a month, if you do yearly, you get a lot of the killer plugins from Universal Audio in native form and really, really good uh, use uh, VST instruments, including the amazing organ. There's the, the new uh, Leslie speaker. <clears throat> it's worth it. So that is governed in the app. Then also, uh, if you have a Volt interface, that's where you register it, something like this. We're going to talk more about the Volt interfaces in other videos. And <clears throat> now, instead of the UA Effects app, you're using UA Connect to register and update your pedals. Interestingly, the setup in terms of what the foot switches do can't be done in there. That can only be done in the mobile app, which really makes no sense to me. But what do I know? And looking at that, where's my phone? It's actually a very simple uh, thing. You really just like shows you the pedals. I didn't have to do any pairing. The phone just said, oh, this pedal is on. Do you want to connect to it? Yes, I do. So there's a couple basic setups that, for example, you can do trails. And Vanessa is here to demonstrate that. So we got trails off. So. Play. So that works as it should. Foot switch mode, delay and reverb is what we have right now, but you can also go to effects and tap tempo, as it actually says right there, meaning this turns delay and reverb on and off, and here you can tap the tempo. According to Toro, there's also a way that he uses it in, which is interesting, and that's going to be added later, where you have uh, reverb always on, so you really, if you want it off, do this. So this only does delay, and this does tap tempo. That's how you use it, and that's probably going to be added at a later point. And then there's the help and reset. <clears throat> so here, you can go to voicing. And that actually, as, as I can see, precision delay and spring 64. Ah, wait. It depending on how it's set up. Okay, so you go to EP3, and now you can do a basic setup. I, I was wrong with what I said in the beginning. With fifth pitch buckets. Okay, interesting. Let's do that. There we go. <clears throat> Turn the reverb off. Vanessa, give us give us something here. OK, 
come on, how cool is that? And then vibey buckets. <laughs> If you left it on the broken bottom, that's what would happen if you call up your tape. Let's look at, well, actually, we should probably go to uh, default because you know, we're going to show that. How do you going to show all that? Okay. That's the default. Oh, there's a lot. Okay, there are a lot of possibilities here. <clears throat> And the same thing for the precision, um, where of course you have uh, the possibilities of lots of modulation things. So let's do this version. Oops, come on. And back to default, the same thing here on the spring. So we're going to go over to the spring. That looks like a lot of different spring variations, variations on the plate. There you go, it sees it. And then of course we want the default in order to show you what we're doing. Same thing on the spring, we're going to go to default. So just know that the possibilities are there to set either of these three to one of these. And then it's in there without having to call up the app again. And if you want to change anything, call up the app, which for a studio session, of course, is great. Let's check out the fractal forest. So the app can do a lot. The app can transform this into a synthy kind of octave tape thing. Don't just buy what it says on the tin. Understand that 
You can tailor it to what you want with these six algorithms. And then you can't really change too much on the front panel. But I'm going to say with the ability to do that in the app, it actually offers more possibilities than the starlight. Uh, but you have to change it with the app, which, of course, in a live situation, you're not fucking doing that. So you're taking three and three with you. But which three and three is up to you? Does that make sense? Vanessa, does it make sense? Kind of. Do you like the concept? Mm, I don't know. I I I, I really miss the uh, the presets. That's. I mean, if I'm playing in a band and I'm I'm uh, playing in different bands, maybe, and I have one band that needs uh, has the, those ambient sounds, then I need those presets, and I don't want to fiddle with knobs too much. And uh, yeah, that's. <laughs> That's like an essential for me. Vanessa's not a fan. Good. We have I, mean, another... I, I really like the sounds there. Really? She, look, look, she likes the sounds. But I mean, she's, you know, she, she, she would but, like uh, to actually... Like, uh, usability is... You would like to access them at any given point. Yeah. Right. There you have it, UA. <laughs> so I'm going to play a bit. Vanessa's going to play a bit. Vanessa's playing a... Um... Vola, Oz, T and C. Lots of switchity options, really sweet ass guitar, just arrived from Vola, thank you Vola. I'm playing my Valiant Soothsayer in my own HP spec, my color that's custom with a maple fretboard, wangy neck, look at that shit, locking tuners of course, um, and a bare knuckle humbucker and P90. This exact spec you can actually get from Valiant Guitars uh, if you contact them and say, I want Henning's guitar, and they're going to build you one just like it. So we're going to go, I mean, technically, we're going to go through some things are stupid because there are so many things under the hood, as you've clearly just seen, but we're going to show you what the default settings are. <laughs> Feedback. Subtle or more, the uh, the Echoplex is dirty. So if you're driving that hard, which there isn't an input really, uh, it can get nice and dirty. Um, let's look at what that color does. It makes the delay almost disappear. Makes it really thick now. Should there be mod? No, because the, te uh, the Echo Brakes technically doesn't have mod. That does. And that's the precision. I want more of that.
obviously don't pull that all the way to the right. He is reverb. Let's play some stuff and I'll fiddle around. So clearly it looks as if a reverb is a knob. That's it. The modulation is for the delay. And the mix is also for the delay. So the delay gets all of this. Reverb seems to get a volume as far as I can tell. Or a mix in this case. Might be wrong. Uh, okay. Continue. Again, it's your bread and butter stuff. I think it's kind of the opposite of a collider. Because when UA does something, it is faithful recreations of old shit. And so you have some drive happening in the different circuits. You have some grit. You have some dirt. And if you don't want your clinical kind of, you know, modern digital sounds, then you reach into the draw and you get your A shit out. Because that's exactly what, what they do. Let's see... If with this, we can get a little bit of a lead sound happening, because I got a triumph on the table right here. I mean, it, it, it works for leads, works for other things. It's a 
that's odd. Sounds you technically won from the Starlight and the Gold Reverberator for less than half of both of them um, with app control where you have some pre-city things and put it into whatever state you want. I'm thinking for a studio, it makes quite a lot of sense. For a live situation, you are looking at limited functionality, but it might be enough. It's clearly not enough for Vanessa, as she stated, rightfully so. But I can still recommend it because it's UA and it sounds good, right? It it really does, yeah. And if I if I um if I would use it or need it in a studio, I would definitely go for this, I guess, because it's like it's actually good, but just not for the live situation. Might be a bit stressy to to always fiddle with the knobs for every for every every sound that you need, every single sound. Look, it's it's a UA pedal. Uh, you decide whether or not that makes sense for you. I'm saying it makes a lot of sense to reduce it in terms of functionality, but make it quite a bit cheaper, but still give you the sounds that we grown to love from the Golden and the Starlight. They are very popular pedals. Now you can get uh, the best of, you know, the, the, the highlights of those two pedals uh, built into one. Um, and, 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 and what's not to like about it? I don't know. Uh, links below. To Tomon and Sweetwater, please use them, that helps. This video has been commissioned by uh, those people, but we'll bitch about whatever we want to bitch about because that's what we do here. And um, also, we're going to put what at the end? Vanessa? Animals! <laughs>